Hello everyone, hope you are well on this Friday evening. We have breaking news going on on a couple of different fronts here I want to bring to you. I would say first, pray for Memphis, Tennessee. And then I would say pray for this country tonight and for this weekend especially because all heck slash dog squeeze slash SHTF is about to break out some of these cities, y'all. You haven't seen it already. They released this footage, this body cam footage and another video footage of what happened. I think it was earlier in the month where some cops were making a traffic stop. This was in Memphis. A guy resisted. They he ran. They tased. Looks like I've watched the video a couple times, but it looks like they tased him. They finally caught up to him. He was running again. And they just basically beat and kicked this guy down and got put in the hospital. The guy passed away a few days later from these injuries. And from the video, watched it a couple of times, it looks bad. I mean, it really does. It looks real bad. I think it looks worse than the George Floyd thing. Uh, and that was pretty bad, you know. So uh, I... <laughs> I can imagine uh, what the cities are going to look like, especially Memphis. Uh, I would avoid, I would avoid them if possible. You know, depending on where you live, you may live in there. But if you can, I would avoid the large cities, maybe even the medium-sized city cities. Uh, you know, just be extra aware out there. This weekend, they're expecting protests to riots. Uh, in Atlanta, Memphis, just about any major city is what I'm thinking too. I did see an email from a subscriber that shared, he's in law enforcement and shared with me an ATF alert that came out earlier this morning. It was warning the uh, arms or firearm dealers in the Twin Cities, Minnesota. It was a warning to them of this, this coming out, this video coming out and uh, warning them of civil unrest that, that, sh that could take place this weekend and to secure their products the best they can. Uh, yeah, they needed that warning. I, I, it's about to come, but uh, it looks bad. Like I said, um, this, this is uh, gonna be a rough one uh, for sure, for sure. So, uh, whew, telling you. Just be extra aware uh, wherever you're wherever you're going out there this weekend, okay? It might not be a bad idea to be gray, blend in, no matter where you are. Just keep it moving, do your thing. You know, go do your live your life, go do your thing. But uh, just just look around and, and have your situate situational awareness going on, okay? Okay, uh, I want to touch on this other subject. This this what I'm about to talk about is really what I was gonna do a video on anyway, um, but before this other breaking news came out about the video, but we've got major escalations going on in the war over there between Russia, Ukraine. Uh, this was a quote from the European Union defense chief said that Russia is now engaged in a war against NATO and the West. I mean, I, I guess the only thing left is, to, is just to officially declare war on them, uh, send in soldiers. I, I'm, I'm sure we have people on the ground there already. You won't even know about. It says that Canada, Canada is the 12th nation now to commit tanks to Ukraine to be used against Russia. <clears throat> we have Russian warships that are reportedly off the coast of the United States that have the hypersonic missile technology. So there's that. I mean, I'm sure they're, they're being watched. I, I'm sure, you know, we do similar to them. We have submarines also. We have warships all over the place. But they do it to us too. So uh, we've got the WHO urging people to stockpile, stockpile radiation medication. I 
I'm just confused because when did this conflict between Russia and Ukraine become a national security threat for the United States? I mean, are we under direct, I mean, is the outcome of this conflict, is it going to result in, you know, a destruction of us immediately? I mean, is this a direct national security threat? Is it, you know, is it that serious? I mean, I know it's serious. You know, it has bigger implications. I understand. I get it. But when you commit tanks and all this other equipment and all these other resources that are, are going to be needed to maintain and keep these tanks running, I mean, you've done everything. You are directly, we are directly involved in that now. This is not just sending arms and sending some helmets and, you know, giving them some advice and coaching and, and all this, you know, advising and all this stuff. It's way more, way over, way past that. To send Abrams tanks, I mean, that's the U.S. main battle tank. I mean, to send that kind of warf, you know, hardware into that battle. Uh, I, I, that doesn't sit well with me, just like it didn't sit well with me to see the Ukrainian flag fly in Congress a little while back. That didn't sit well with me either. That shouldn't even happen. We should only have the American flag in Congress, the Capitol, period. That's just wrong. I mean, why is Zelensky there making speeches like he's in charge? He's not. He's not. Now, I'm trying not to take sides here as far as, you know, Ukraine, Russia. Okay. Because I see both points. Especially I see, you know, Russia, you know, they don't want, uh, you know, that's their border. You know, you know, it, it's like we had a Cuban Missile Crisis in 19, what, 62, when uh, over, we almost went to war over, Missiles being stationed in Cuba, pretty close to us. How much different is that than you've got all this all this hardware of NATO right on the doorstep of Russian territory? I mean, it's complicated. I know it's complicated. So I'm not taking side. I'm not going that way. I'm just reporting what is going on and how this is escalating because. The way we're going, the direction we're going right now with this is that before too long, by, by spring or even before spring, it looks like we will be in direct, we will have direct hostilities with Russia. The United States will. Like our guy, our army to army. And I don't believe people are, are, are ready for that. I don't believe most Americans are walking around out there remotely aware of this or, or the implications when this kicks off. Because it's not like other wars where, oh, uh, you know, that's over there. That's over there. I, you know, it's not going to affect us. Yeah, it will this time. Like more than they can ever imagine. Directly affect us on our soil right here, United States and North America. Now, Canada, they're sending in tanks. Now you're a target, you know, so you're not out of this either. So I think people need to really realize that. Now, pray that that won't even get that far, but so far we only have escalation. We don't have, I, I hear nothing about diplomacy I hear nothing about that. Only escalation. We know where that leads. We know where it does. You just study history and you see it coming. It's marching right down. It's, it's a train that's just can't stop, it looks like. So I saw another little report. I don't know. I don't have, you know, there's a lot of chatter about uh, pending or um, cyber attacks that are imminent, imminent cyber attacks that will be uh, conducted against the United States, especially with the financial institutions, airlines. I think the airlines are already getting hit by them. Just like Southwest with that glitch they had. That was a cyber attack in my opinion. 
but we could see a massive cyber attack that would do more than just ground airplanes. It could ground a lot of stuff, including electricity, financial, your banks, keep some cash on hand, keep your gasoline tanks full, it's possible. That's my advice. And just keep preparing, keep, keep prepping. Not let up now for sure. And let's just keep our eyes and ears open. And again, uh, as you go about your business this weekend and next week, uh, just be aware, be gray and aware. All right. I have a really good verse, a very encouraging verse, because I think we need we need some good news and encouragement after all that. I get it. Uh, this is from Hebrews. Book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. That is the truth. Amen. From the beginning to today to tomorrow, forever, forever. I mean, think about forever, what that really means. He's the same. And he's always good. And he's always our rock and always our redeemer forever. No matter what is going on. Uh, no matter uh, what changes occur in this world, trials, tribulations, your personal situations, troubles, illness, you name it. He is the constant. He is the same. No matter what people tell you, no matter what the false prophets are going to say, then they will. And they and you already hear it. But, uh, but trust and uh, take comfort in that. And we need to keep praying. All right. Let's be safe out there. God bless you. I'll see you soon.